When I met Jim Caprero 20 years ago, he told me that economic development really can be defined as one thing, and that's jobs. Our mission um, was to revitalize the Chicago Lawn neighborhood, the Marquette Park area. Um, we practiced what we called comprehensive community development. We didn't just do housing, we didn't just do retail, we did it all. Because we felt that all of those areas, all of that kind of programming represented puzzle pieces um, for a complete neighborhood. If you go to the Jewel Food Store, um, that's there because of Jim's vision, again, the other place, of course, that uh, we always point to is Nabisco, and that the work that he did with Nabisco to keep that in this neighborhood. It, the list goes on and on, but from NHS's standpoint, we still like the fact that we're here because of Jim's vision. I think it's one of the best things we've ever done at Greater Southwest Development Corporation, inviting NHS in and then partnering with NHS in very special ways through, throughout all these years. We now have a very interesting kind of thing going on in Chicago, and that is, is that we have Islamic people working here in partnership with St. Rita Catholic Parish and working with a Jewish synagogue here, the only African-American Jewish synagogue in Chicago, all working together to try to build this neighborhood. But in this neighborhood today, all of those people, all of those leaders, black, white, brown, Christian, Muslim, unchurched, are all working together. Jim was right at the center of pulling all of these people together and showing how doing development really helps people. She's someone you can count on. You, can, you know she's got to be there. She's involved in a lot of things, a lot of things for the community. And Yvonne and I uh, go around to all the abandoned buildings and board of houses and report them, write out all the addresses, tag them out, give them one to each alderman of each ward. Then one to GADC, one neighborhood house, and one to community policing to make them aware of the uh, dangers of these properties in our communities. She believes in the community. Anything that you want to do in the community, just let Shirley know. She's not afraid to go up to the uh, drug dealers on the corner and uh, face them and ask them to move or whatever. I try and make the community a safer and a better place. I'm very involved in the community and we work together in trying to make it a safe and healthy neighborhood. One of the reasons why Shirley's so involved, like she said, she wants to live in this community. In order to live in this community, you got to try to keep it up. Uh, Shirley, she will do anything for anybody. The work that Brenda Palms Barber and the North Lawndale Employment Work does here in North Lawndale is really critical to helping people who have very low levels of skills and very not very many marketable uh, job skills uh, move themselves to a place where they can begin to get a foot in the door. The mission of the North Lawndale Employment Network is to improve the earnings potential of the residents of North Lawndale through innovative employment initiatives. One of the biggest challenges that we have as an employment organization is that 57% of the adults here in this community have had some involvement with the criminal justice system. I think Brenda uh, really is a national resource in many respects. I mean, clearly she's a neighborhood resource, but I think Brenda's a national resource because she's, she really is a visionary. So Sweet Beginnings essentially started off with us focusing on honey. And we have an apiary here uh, at the North Lawndale Employment Network in our backyard. We have about 30 hives total. <clears throat> and we harvest and cultivate local urban honey. But we also create natural, organic skincare products um, because that's really where the profit margins are in the skincare line. It's, it's also what helps us to create a sustainable business. And so thinking about a product like that, that you can actually get coming from North Lawndale is a pretty remarkable thing. And that's what we're interested in. This is not sort of a, a short-term solution. We really felt that a jobs creation strategy was what we really had to, to implement in the community. So we have developed these products 
um, individuals are able to not only develop beekeeping skills, but they're actually learning every aspect of any business um, that are directly related to a number of different sectors. A lot of positive energy uh, coming from Brenda and the North Lawndale Employment Network. They're invaluable to us as a community. He's everywhere. I mean, he's a city councilman, you know, he's the chair of this advisory council. Uh, he's the uh, founder and chairperson of the Elgin Community Network. Uh, he, he's uh, genuinely very concerned and cares for the city and for the residents of this city. Elgin is a vibrant community. We're uh, growing. Uh, we have a, a, a great diversified population. He's uh, genuinely very concerned and cares for the city and for the residents. Dave is a leader. If I had to say it in one word, he's a doer. Uh, unfortunately, I'm one of those kind of guys I get nervous when I see other people working and I, I want to I get my hands on the tool as well. So <laughs> I kind of like to get in and get involved. Well, you know, we have neighbor works every year and uh, Dave is always part of that, putting it together, going out um, the neighborhood walk to identify the properties uh, that we think we should get the help. Who would ever think that uh, I'd get uh, uh, a lot of enjoyment about taking chain link fences down, but I do. And four hours out of your, uh, your day, a couple of days a year, can help change a neighborhood. But we had over 150 people volunteer to work in Elgin this year. They all had a tremendous part. They worked in the rain on June 5th and were covered with mud and uh, enjoyed every minute of it. The Development Council's mission is to be a catalyst for, the, for community development here in the West Elmore Park area. And part of that, the way we uh, carry out that mission is establishing relationships with residents. And uh, we do that within the, uh, the confines of block club organizing. And Janice has just taken that far beyond anything that we had originally imagined. But there are so many more people who are involved and invested and, and are not willing to let their community just uh, disintegrate. When folks come in and meet with them and they see um, the actions that the residents over here take and that they band together in various advisory councils and committees to get work done, then people understand that um, West Humble Park residents are committed. She's very good uh, at winning the confidence of people who live here as well as some of the businesses to promote West Humboldt Park in the manner that Janice does, in the manner that we try to do in an environment as challenging as that is monumental. I'm a softie I guess uh, <laughs> and I, I fall in love with things and people and I'm, I'm in love with, with Humboldt Park period. Uh, the community realizes that we can't do everything and so they have to be involved and it's, it's all in growing a more healthy community in West Humboldt Park. Uh, she's just good with people, um, she's calm, she's professional, and she just, she, she accomplishes. Well, Kelly is sitting on the board, she uh, has advice in uh, finance uh, wise and recommendations of home owners that have children that can purchase homes on that same block down the street from uh, their parents. My heart is, is working at it from a, an investment perspective. I think there are a lot of people who came in and continue to come in, buy properties at a very low price, rent it out to people and then never show up again and you can't build a community around absentee landlords. There was a new development going on. She meets with the developer and she gave Carol and myself a call and asked us to come out and meet developers. That's giving us an insight of what's going on in West Inglewood. We had the opportunity to visit before it was even put on the market. And those are the kind of things that she keeps us in the loop on. I think West Inglewood is greatly misunderstood. Um, I think that 
in the media, there is often a lot of negative publicity about West Inglewood. But beyond it, I see the potential. And that's why I'm a real estate developer and investor, right? You see the potential that other people don't necessarily see yet. She's very determined. Uh, she is uh, uh, one of the bricks in the community that will build a foundation. From my perspective, I think there's an opportunity to build wealth. And so if we can work to get the people in the community to be able to become you know, investors in the community, I do think that that's the stepping stone for rebuilding the neighborhood. It was probably 10 or 12 years ago already that uh, some of us started sitting together to try to imagine what would it be like for a priest to not be working in a parish setting, but be in a setting where the whole focus is just on reconciliation. Because when something goes wrong, you not only have an offender, you also have the one who was offended, and then this, the, the whole community is affected. When people have a chance to really speak from their heart, um, and feel the respect and the safety of what we use as a peacemaking circle, it's a method of uh, restorative justice, that people can, that there's healing in that. And people who otherwise are opposed can come together. We see the crime, we see the violence, but we don't see how a lot of that was created. And Father Kelly is very strong to have that balance, that you can walk the middle in the middle and, and, and be just uh, to both sides. On Wednesday night, when you sit in circle, these would be kids from different gangs. And they'll sit in this circle and they'll talk to one another respectfully. Um, and this is, this is because you can do that if you create a place where kids feel that they are respected and that's how they are to be with one another. And that's something the courts don't offer. Um, that can only happen in the community. If we're going to stop the violence, if violence is going to, to lessen, it's got to come from the communities. It's very liberating to know that you're not on for fixing the problem. I can't fix it. Um, I'm not going to be able to fix a family who's lost a child to homicide. I'm not going to be able to fix a 15-year-old who just got sentenced to 50 years in prison. But I can be there. I can walk into that uncomfortable place. Father Kelly has a welcoming approach. And he offers just that kind of presence that um, they can get in touch with what's really deep within, within them. But at the same time, what comes out of that is like the deep down goodness that's there and the strength.